Get excited about GitHub Universe. GitHub Copilot is now free for teachers, a Minecraft-inspired coding font, and a pick of the week that will take handheld gaming to a whole new level. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. As always, I will now ask you to like and subscribe. All right, so my shirt this week is from the hardware collab between Microsoft and artist Gavin Matthew. And as you can see, it also features the wonderful Microsoft Paint logo on the back. Uh, I actually featured this shirt in this collab a couple of months ago, and then I had to buy a few pieces of merch myself. I say this sincerely, seeing Microsoft officially partner with streetwear designers on collabs like this makes me feel like my five years there had some impact. I know it was completely unrelated, but I'm still ecstatic uh, to see official stuff like this become available. Okay, enough of all that, let's get into the latest news and projects. Okay, so first up, get excited about GitHub Universe. Get it? Get it? All right, GitHub Universe, which is our annual global developer conference that covers cloud and AI and security, and of course, community, uh, is gonna be taking place this November. And this year's event is going to be hybrid, meaning that we will be online and in person. And it's gonna be at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco on November 9th and 10th. Early bird tickets are on sale now, and I've got links and details down below. I'm gonna be there, I would love to see you there. If you come and if you haven't seen me around, please say hello. I really love meeting our users and anyone who's willing to watch my nonsense every week. So you can go to githubuniverse.com for more details and all that stuff is linked in the show notes too. Moving on to some other GitHub news, GitHub Copilot is one of the most exciting things that we've built, and I've got a couple of news items about it. Now, if you're not familiar, GitHub Copilot is our AI-assisted pair programming tool that helps you code more quickly and efficiently. It's completely changed the way I code. I love it. So the first bit of news is that Irene from the GitHub Next team pinned a blog post showing off research into a question that that team posed over a year ago. And that question was, is the GitHub Copilot making developers more productive? Because let's face it, these tools are awesome, but we should probably find out if you know, they actually improve our productivity and happiness. So to answer that question and to quantify the results, the GitHub Next team conducted research using a combination of surveys and experiments, which led to some unexpected and some uh, expected answers. You should definitely read Irene's blog post for more details. There's also an academic paper that goes into more detail too, but the big takeaway is that in the team's research, they saw that GitHub Copilot supports faster completion times, conserves developers' mental energy, helps them focus on more satisfying work, and ultimately helps them find more fun in the coding that they do, which is really awesome. And as I said, I really love seeing the actual data support what I think a lot of us instinctively feel when we use tools like Copilot. The blog post and the additional research are linked down below. And in the second bit of GitHub Copilot news, GitHub Copilot is now available for teachers. Not only that, but it's free for all teachers who are verified through the GitHub Global Campus. Now, I've read a lot of blog posts and comments from teachers discussing the impact Copilot can have on their students, and there's been some understandable hesitancy. But the good news is that the GitHub education team is working with teachers and professors to get their feedback and, and also you know, figure out how this can be better integrated into the, into the teaching that they do. And the results so far are really good. Some professors have even used Copilot to generate explanations of code examples, which is very cool. And it can even be used to generate programming assignments, although obviously some scenarios are gonna work better than others. But now that GitHub Copilot will be more broadly available to educators, I think that this is really gonna improve how everyone can work with and leverage these new tools, both educators and students. So I've got more details linked down below. If you're not verified with the GitHub Global Campus Program, I've got a link to that uh, down below too, and you can join it. All right, now let's move into some type news. All right, so fun fact about me, I'm a huge typography nerd. I love fonts and typefaces and can be downright obsessive about how glyphs look and how a font is current. And since I spend a, most of my day in a text editor, programming fonts or monospaced fonts in general are some of my favorite types of typefaces. So I was thrilled when I saw this new Minecraft inspired 
font called Monocraft from Idris Hassan. And Idris created a font based on the typeface used in the Minecraft UI, but he made some changes for readability and spacing. So it's monospaced, it has ligature support, and it's surprisingly actually really readable. Uh, I've got a link to Idris's GitHub repo in the links down below. Give it a shot. This might not be my everyday coding font, but I really love the work that's gone into it. And Idris isn't done yet. He's been uh, continuing to make updates and improvements. Really good stuff. Also, if you want to really blow your mind, someone made a monospaced version of Comic Sans for coding, and it's, it's actually really, really good. I'm going to link that down below too. All right, so great job, Idris. All right, moving on to some other great projects. I want to give a shout out to Wolfred Hughes, who built his own structural diff tool that compares files based on their syntax, which is a pretty interesting way of doing diffing. And so you can see the example behind me to see what it does and how this differs, no pun intended, uh, to some other solutions. This works with over 20 different programming languages, and it also works with Git, which is very cool. I've got a link uh, to the project and to Wolfred's blog post about how he wrote this application because it's really interesting. So great work, Wolfred. Love this. All right, speaking of great work, GitHub user Nassim Software created a Google Maps street view of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So you can basically explore the Breath of the Wild map and then explore the places just like you were using Google Street View. This is amazingly cool. I love this. Um, it, the source is also available on GitHub. And I really love seeing people get creative with stuff like this. It's, it's just super fun. So as I said, I've got a link to the website and to Nassim's GitHub repo down below. But this is just super fun. And now it's time for my pick of the week. All right, so Apple had his annual iPhone event this week. And, and great news, next time you see me, I will be the proud owner of a purple iPhone 14 Pro Max. But purple iPhones aside, some of the biggest news was actually about the Apple Watch, including a new Apple Watch 8, an updated Apple Watch SE, and the gigantic, like way too gigantic for my baby wrists, Apple Watch Ultra. But here's the thing, what can you really do on your Apple Watch? You know, besides control your music, see notifications, get directions, monitor your heart rate and pulse ox, log into your computer. Like, can it even game? Can it run Quake? Well, my friends, the answer to that question is now yes. Developer Tomas, my own clone, Bimazel, ported Quake 1 to the Apple Watch, and it runs at 60 frames per second at 640 by 480. And at a lower frame rate, it can even run as high as like 1024 by 768. So it's got touch and gyro and digital crown controls. And now, because of App Store rules, you can't just install this on your watch. You need to build the project, download some external assets, and then you can sideload it to your Apple Watch. So it's going to take some work, but it does work. I do have a confession to make, as you might be able to tell uh, based on my wrist. I lost my Apple Watch like six months ago. So I'm not going to be able to try this out until my Apple Watch 8 arrives in a couple of weeks. But when I get it, I will absolutely do what needs to be done and get this running on my tiny, tiny wrists. Game and watch indeed. So I've got a link to Tomas's GitHub repo and the YouTube video he created showing off this amazing feat down below. What's the weirdest device that you've seen Quake run, uh, Quake 1 run on? Let me know in the comments down below, but also let me know your thoughts on any of our other stories and projects. If you like this episode, give it a like on YouTube and go ahead and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.